Giant Pacific Octopus Sharks are not supposed to lose fights to something that looks like a floating bedsheet with eyes, but the ocean doesn't care about logic, and the giant Pacific octopus proves it. This thing can grow up to 4 meters across and weigh more than 50 kilograms, and it hunts sharks the way a bouncer removes a drunk guy from a nightclub, quietly, efficiently, and with way too many arms. This octopus doesn't chase sharks. It waits. It hides in rock cracks, coral caves, or shipwrecks. Then, when a small shark swims too close, it explodes out, grabs the shark with all eight arms, and wraps it like a living weighted blanket of death. Sharks need to swim to breathe. The octopus knows that, so it pins the shark down, blocks the gills, and suffocates it, slowly, while the shark flails like someone being mugged by spaghetti. There's real footage from the Seattle Aquarium, where a giant Pacific octopus kills a dogfish shark in front of a crowd, just casually reaches out, grabs it, and goes, Mine now. Saltwater Crocodile if the ocean had a do not mess with list, saltwater crocodiles would be written at the top in bold, underlined, and probably with teeth marks in the paper. These reptiles don't just survive alongside sharks, they hunt them. And not by accident, not out of defense, just because they can. Saltwater crocodiles can reach 6 to 7 meters long and weigh over 1,000 kilograms, which makes them heavier than most sharks and made of armor instead of soft tissue. They are not built for speed like sharks. They're built for bite force, ambush, and pure prehistoric violence. They share habitats with bull sharks, lemon sharks, black tip sharks, especially in the murky estuaries of Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. And when a shark wanders into crocodile country, it's basically swimming into a trap. Crocodiles strike from below, grab the shark across the skull or gills, and then do the thing crocodiles are famous for. The death roll, a spinning, bone-breaking, organ-mashing blender move that turns sharks into shark puree. Giant grouper. Now we go from a giant reptile to something that looks like it shouldn't be dangerous at all. A fish that basically swims around looking like a sad underwater beanbag chair. But do not be fooled. The giant grouper is the ocean's eat first, ask zero questions machine. And yes, it eats sharks. These things can grow up to 2.5 meters long and weigh over 360 kilograms, which is already bigger than most juvenile sharks. But what makes them terrifying is not their size. It's their method. They don't chase. They don't fight. They just wait, like a couch, that can suddenly unhinge its jaw and swallow half your family. Groupers hang out inside shipwrecks, caves, and reef walls. When a small shark, usually a black tip, bamboo shark, or young reef shark, swims by, the grouper launches forward, opens its mouth, and vacuum sucks the shark in whole. There's a viral video where a giant grouper eats a four-foot black tip shark in one bite. So yes, sharks can be eaten by a fish that has the same movement speed and energy as a couch potato during a power outage. Orcas. If sharks are the scary movie villains of the ocean, then orcas are the writers, directors, and producers of the whole story. Because they don't just kill sharks, they professionally uninstall them from the ecosystem. Orcas are the only predator on Earth that regularly hunts, kills, and eats great white sharks. Not by accident, not out of defense, but on purpose, with strategy, teamwork, and honestly, kind of rude level of confidence. Here's how they do it. They flip the shark upside down, which puts it into a state called tonic immobility, basically a forced paralysis where the shark can't move or breathe. Then the orca calmly bites into the shark's liver, rips it out, eats it, and leaves the rest of the body to sink like trash. Why the liver? Because a shark's liver is huge, sometimes 25% of its entire body weight, and packed with fat, which is the highest energy food in the ocean. There's a documented case from South Africa where two orcas, known by name, Port and Starboard, killed so many great whites that the entire coastline's shark population disappeared for months. A great white shark is used to being the scariest thing in the water. An orca is used to being the one that scares the thing that scares everything else. Sea lions. Most people think sea lions are adorable barking beach sausages that clap for fish at marine parks. But in the wild, they're fast, aggressive, and perfectly willing to eat sharks if the opportunity shows up. Sea lions don't go after great whites or tiger sharks. That would be suicide, but they absolutely hunt and eat smaller shark species, including leopard sharks, smooth hound sharks, and dogfish. Their hunting style is the exact opposite of a shark's. Sharks rely on power and momentum. Sea lions rely on speed, sharp turns, and chaos. A sea lion will shoot in, grab the shark right behind the gills, then thrash it violently until meat starts tearing off. They don't bother killing the shark first. They just start eating it alive like a kid ripping open a snack bag on a long car ride. There's footage from Monterey Bay, California, where a sea lion caught a leopard shark, brought it to the surface, and just started shaking mouthfuls of meat off. And one more thing. Sharks don't like bubbles. 
Sea lions blow bubbles in their face on purpose. Ocean bullying is real. Sperm whales. Now we move from fast, playful predators to the biggest toothed carnivore on Earth, the sperm whale. And while sperm whales don't actively hunt sharks the way orcas do, they absolutely can and do kill them when they feel threatened or annoyed. A sperm whale can reach 20 meters long and weigh up to 57 tons, which means it's literally heavier than a fully loaded semi-truck. Put a shark next to a sperm whale, and it looks like a mosquito trying to mug a freight train. Sperm whales normally hunt giant squid in the deep ocean, but they sometimes run into sharks like sleeper sharks, six-gill sharks, or even makos. And when that happens, the whale uses one weapon, its tail. A single tail strike from a sperm whale generates enough force to instantly break bones, rupture organs, or kill a shark outright. Sharks have been found with crushed jaws and fractured skulls after encounters with whales. And there are documented cases of sharks backing away from whale pods like they just realized they made a terrible life decision. Leopard seals. Leopard seals look like the result of someone combining a dolphin, a snake, and a serial killer. They are fast, smart, and aggressive. And while most people only know them for eating penguins like marshmallows, they also hunt sharks. Not big sharks, but Antarctic species like ghost sharks and small dogfish absolutely end up on the menu. A leopard seal can grow up to 3.5 meters long and weighs around 600 kilograms, which already puts it in the same weight class as many of the sharks it hunts. But the real advantage is not size, but its teeth and technique. Leopard seals have razor-edged molars designed to saw through flesh, not just hold on to it. They grab a shark, whip their head back and forth like a reptile, and tear off chunks while the shark is still alive and thrashing. They also use something sharks can't do, ice. They sometimes drag prey onto ice sheets or pin them against frozen surfaces so they can bite without resistance. Imagine being a shark and suddenly you're being eaten by a seal who is using the literal planet as a cutting board. Also, leopard seals don't fear sharks. There are recorded cases of seals swimming straight toward sharks instead of away from them, like, I'm the one who knocks. Humans. And now we reach the final creature that hunts sharks, the only one that doesn't do it to survive, defend territory, or follow instinct. Every other animal on this list hunts sharks occasionally. We hunt sharks at scale. Not hundreds, not thousands. About 100 million sharks every single year, which works out to around 190 sharks killed every minute. So while you've been watching this video, a few thousand sharks have already died somewhere in the ocean, mostly without anyone ever seeing it happen. And unlike orcas, crocodiles, or giant squid, humans don't kill sharks because they're hungry. We kill them because they're profitable. A single shark's fins can sell for hundreds of dollars, so fishermen slice the fins off, throw the shark back into the ocean still alive, and let it sink to the bottom where it suffocates. Then there's bycatch, sharks getting trapped in nets meant for tuna or swordfish. Most of them never even make it onto the dinner plate. They just die in the process of catching something else. We also kill sharks for sport, take pictures with them, dump the body, and call it recreation. Shark liver oil gets turned into makeup and supplements. Some governments even pay people to kill sharks near beaches, as if the ocean is supposed to come with a safety guarantee. Meanwhile, shark attacks on humans are just around five per year globally, and we kill hundreds of thousands per day. So on paper, sharks are the terrifying apex predators of the ocean. In reality, they're becoming an endangered species because the deadliest hunter in the food chain doesn't live underwater. It walks on land, drives boats, runs factories, and signs fishing permits. So yeah, sharks might look like the bosses of the ocean, but as you've seen, a lot of things are perfectly happy to turn them into lunch. And that's all for today's episode. If you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and give it a big thumbs up because we're just getting started.